it's Hazel Jarvis. We are going to imagine today that we have been beachcombing and we are going to paint our pebbles and our finds. I always like to start with a warm-up sketch. And here's an overview of the materials you'll need. I like to start with a very loose coloured pencil sketch before going on so to the I'm ink. So I'm going to use a little bit of a broken off dowel, but a stick works brilliantly. And I've got a little jar of Sumi ink for my drawing. So I start by drawing in just a little bit of the seaweed. And the great thing about the stick is you can vary the pressure so you can get these lovely thick and thin lines. Still working with the ink, I'm going to use a cut off round paper brush that I wrecked by using for glue and a little stencil cut from watercolour paper and I'm going to stipple a pattern on some of the pebbles. So to be sure to test your brush and knock off most of the ink on paper towel before you go to the pebbles. Hold your pebble stencil in place and lightly, lightly, lightly press down with your brush. You only want a faint sort of dapple, like the speckle on an egg. Next, I'm going to take the stub end of a candle and I'm going to put a little bit on my pebbles as a resist. So you just draw on just a little bit, sort of a zigzag up and down in a couple of places. It's hard to see where the wax went, but when we paint over it with our watercolour, you'll see. So I mix up a sort of a grey and I paint over it and you can see instantly where the wax repels the paint, which gives you a very cool effect. We're going to use white gouache for the dots on our sea urchin. So I'm going to paint a background on the sea urchin in a sort of a sludgy greeny purple so that I can put the white dots on top and they show up. So I'm using a moss green, number 58, and I've combined it with a little bit of my ultramarine violet, my 38, to get this lovely dark colour. And I leave a little bit of blank paper in the centre for the centre of the sea urchin because the sea urchin is hollow. I love to mix my black 20 and my lavender for a nice dark pebble colour. So here goes another pebble colour. Again, you can see how effective the wax is. And if you leave some white, you can see a little bit of that speckle too. For the tiny pebble next door, we'll just vary the colour, add a little bit more water to it and maybe a touch of burnt sienna. Although that looks more like purple. Hmm. Okay, and then we'll do this pebble. Again, we'll leave a little bit of unpainted paper and admire the dark ink speckles. The turn of the mussel shells. So that is basically indigo, your 67, a lovely dark color. You can leave a little bit of unpainted paper at the top to show where the outer skin has been abraded off. Or, this is a shard of a recently broken dish. I could pretend I found a snippet of china on the beach. Maybe I'll do the china instead. Although, of course, we will simplify the pattern a little bit. Next, we'll do the pattern on this little china shard. I'm going to add one more pebble just down here, just underneath this one. Another fraction. 
And now we'll do the seaweed, which is basically your burnt sienna, number 46. And I paint over my ink lines. I don't try to stay in between them. I want this to be nice and loose. So I just paint over and around. We'll put some darker, some sort of purpley grey on one side of the pebble just to give it a little bit more dimension. And we'll also do the same thing with the purple to the sea urchin. And while we have this purple black colour on our brush, we'll just add a little bit of pattern to our mussel shells too. We'll add a little bit more pattern to our china shard. With a nice dark blue. And you want to use your nicest brush with your finest point. Then I go back with my very handy little wooden dowel and I strengthen up some of the ink lines and again I go outside the paint. Now we'll just finish up with some of my favourite uh, Doc Martens straight from the jar. Uh, I love these veined stones, so we'll put some veining in on our pebbles and we'll put the dots in on our sea urchin. I'm also going to add a, a little bit of white for the abrasion on the mussel shell. So in order to make the sea urchin appear three-dimensional, I deliberately curve around with the dots. To finish up, I'm just going to put some of these uh, lighter, brighter sort of air sacs at the bottom of the seaweed. You now have a, a lovely memento of a wonderful day at the beach, and I can't wait to see what you do.